So people might experience stress through frustration by losing something or failing to achieve a goal. Another way they can experience stress is through conflict. Conflict occurs when two or more incompatible motivations compete for expression. A lot of work has been done on work-life balance and how that can produce stress and conflicts. There are demands from family life and demands from our working lives and these can compete with each other. Sometimes both family and work need attention at the same time, so it becomes very difficult for people to try and satisfy both sets of demands. Oftentimes they can't. There are actually three different types of conflict. The approach approach, the avoidance avoidance and the approach avoidance. We'll go through some examples to illustrate them. The first type is what we call approach approach type conflict. Now all of these conflict types are not equally stressful. The approach approach type conflict is where you have to choose between two positive alternatives. You've got two competing goals. I know all of you are not necessarily going to go into psychology as a career, but for the sake of this example, imagine that your goal is to become a psychologist. When you finish your study, you start applying for jobs, you get a letter of offer from one place, which just so happens to be a ski resort. They've been looking for a psychologist. If you accept that job, what you'll be doing is talking to people, giving them some motivational encouragement about their skiing on the slope, maybe to try more difficult runs and things like that and helping them deal with the disappointment of falling over when they ski. That won't take much of your time, so you can have a lot of time to sit in front of the fireplace and drink hot chocolates and go skiing yourself as well. And they'll pay you lots of money to do that. There are no jobs like this in psychology, but imagine if there is one. You're pretty excited by the possibility of a career on the snow, but you receive another letter of offer the next day. It's from a very exclusive island resort and they want you to run some mindfulness sessions for the client who are paying a lot of money. You only really have to do a couple of those sessions a day, so you've got a lot of time to sit on the beach, drink daiquiris and chill out. They'll give you lots of money as well. You've got to choose between these two jobs. Which one do you choose? Is that a hard choice? Well, yes it is. So it could produce stress. Why is that stressful? You know they're likely to both have very positive outcomes. By choosing one, you lose the positive aspects of the other one. Also, you don't know which option would be better. One of them might be slightly more positive than the other, but it's really hard to tell. This is stressful because you're giving up the positive aspects of the one you didn't choose, and this is what causes the stress. What if the conflict is slightly different? The second type is what we call avoidance, avoidance type conflict where well, we have to choose between two really unattractive possibilities. Imagine this time you've got a very strong phobia of going to the dentist, but at the same time you've noticed over the last week or two that you've got a really bad toothache. You can either choose to put up with the toothache and not have to confront going to the dentist, and that means lots of pain, or you can choose to face your fears and go to the dentist. Both of these are pretty unattractive goals or unattractive outcomes. The reason why this is stressful is because no matter which one you choose, it's likely you won't enjoy the experience at all. This is the most stressful type of conflict. Now, there's a third possibility, the approach avoidance type. And this is not about a choice between two different behaviours. This is about a choice between whether or not to pursue a goal or a behaviour that has a positive and a negative aspect to it. For this example, imagine you're at a really cool party and you meet somebody for the first time and your id instantly opens its eyes and says, this person is super hot. So your id is really excited about this person and it's telling you, you should date this person. Now the problem is, even though they're really hot, you've noticed they've got some negative attributes. They really love Celine Dion. You have to decide whether to pursue a relationship with them now. A relationship with this person means you get to spend lots of time with somebody who's really hot, but you'd also be listening to Celine Dion. Or if you decide not to pursue your relationship with them, you don't have to listen to Celine Dion, but you miss out on spending time with somebody you think is hot. You have to accept something positive and also something negative, or you're choosing to avoid something negative, but then lose something positive. The positive and negative aspects make it difficult to choose, and it can produce vacillation, where we decide to pursue the goal and then decide not to pursue the goal at the same time.